He also had Grandmaster in his Void Spirit as well. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so clearly he knows, he, he loves to play these uh, Spirit Bros, but unfortunately when you come against the King Storm Spirit, it's just not that easy. I still find it funny how Samael is bronze on his Storm. Like, he, he just doesn't care about having Dota Plus. He doesn't need these levels. He only won a TI with that hero. You know, he's always like, I'll put that bronze next to my Aegis. And, well, <laughs> We'll see what Nigma Galaxy. Their burst damage is not amazing for Nigma. That's something nice because you do, you know, Weaver might be able to time lapse. You might be able to get those swaps off, which isn't helpful. But the team fight of the Mars Arena with the uh, Black Hole, even the Nether Ward from the Pugna can do a lot. So it's going to be hard to go 5 on 5. It definitely is. And both teams as well making pretty much the exact move as each other, taking control of the enemy triangle area, so not really going to be too much action happening here at the start of the game. Probably would just be the standard two for two on the bounties, and everyone just plodle on down to their lanes as normal. I mean, yeah. so we were saying how game number one, the mid was, a, you know, it was going to be a skill matchup, so it should have really been 50-50, but he got smashed. I mean, if Castile just gets crushed in this laning phase as well. <laughs> will he be able to come back from the tilt, Otomo, or will he just basically mentally check out the thing? I, I think he's gonna come back. You know, I mean, when they let the storm spread in to give him the rematch, you know, that's that's what happened. They left it in. He was probably like begging for it. He's like, guys, give me another crack at it. You got it. You know, you go, chief. We'll see what he can do in this situation. Yeah, I feel like a. Uh... Oh, all eyes are going to be on this mid. Mm. Going to see down whether Pastel could do it. Already, Smell just wins very slightly on the old blocking wall. Doesn't really make that much impact though at the end of the day, but you know, we'll see how it changes things. Mm -hmm. Let's start off with the Flame Guard, which means that which does get instantly removed here by Smell, but it's fine. It's not a big deal here. Can you get a couple of those CS? And it's very, it feels very similar to the previous start, right? Where Smell was able to get a few denies before they even reach the tower. 4 and 2 to the 0 0 of the Ember. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's not a great start at all. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe once he gets a couple of points onto his flame guard, it doesn't get immediately removed. Uh, things might change. We want that bomb. Yeah, Matthew and Stoic having a little 1v1. Check out the grenade. And that's just an easy first blood. Just like game number one, Stoic was able to run down Matthew. Now it's Matthew paying him back, getting the first blood himself. So he was really not happy about that situation in game number one. So he could yes. start getting pictures off him. Nice dodge by Jeez, but he actually dodged by walking closer to Kuroki, so he still takes a couple he cups a couple of hits, but he's alive, which is all that matters here. And in the first game, I felt like the Ventral Spirit can do decently against the Tai, but Pugna, he's faster than you. His he can hit you with like a couple of nether blasts on the way out. If you go close to hit him, it's not fun for old Venji here. No, it's really not. Oh we'll god, see. look at the bit! Oh no. <laughs> Don't, Otomo. Don't. We gotta find any way, a bit of copium, anything like that here from Pastille. I'm huffing! Plus. I'm huffing as hard as I can. What do you want from me? You know? He keeps and... on denying right in front of his face, man, by the tier 1 tower. Oh, Samir was no chill. Yeah, 10 and 12 and 5 against 6 and 0 right now. Oh, oh, that feels rough. You got Jeezy? Takes a lot of damage, but he's gonna be fine. You know, they're, they're doing a good job just ignoring Kachal completely and just being like, all right, let's go for GZ. But it, it's not that bad for the snap fight, just because if you reach level 6, you still bring impact to your team. An offensive impact. An offensive impact is the what you want. You don't want just another save here. So as long as he gets levels on the snap, he's going to be fine. As past, he got, he's got the ball a lot sooner than the previous game. You know, he has the ball. That's, that's nice. That's true. I think this is like all down to being able to have the flame guard. Middle up top, Jeezy oh, on Dev's it, door. Maybe the anchor. Double hit, he's slowed. Just can't get on top of him fast enough. And actually, Catchel's the one who's putting the hurt over towards Miracle. There's a lot of trade flying around the place, but at the same time, the tight hunt is pretty low. They forced Snapfire to run all the way back to base, so it's more space there for the Wind Rainer to resume the farm. Yeah, this uh, it, that was all thanks to the anchor. He was able to get the anchor on Miracle, which means that those attacks did very little damage. And Snapfire is able to stay alive. And Miracle's CS is actually pretty bad. 7 and 2 to the 13 and 5. He has been focusing a lot on killing the Snapfire. And so GZ is just having the impact you want, which is that he's distracting the enemy carry and preventing him from getting farm. And you know. Oh, actually, down bottom. 
That's a little bit of pressure on Tamathi, he's going to be fine. You know, we said about if they go for the Alchemist off lane, and then maybe Kuroki just completely skips Eidolons. Well, he's skipping Eidolons anyway. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't um, want them. I'm a little surprised by that, to be honest with you. But you do get decent damage coming out from the other two spells. But no, Eidolons is... I mean, to be fair, their biggest value in the lane stage was denying creeps. And they don't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. Uh, it looks like Pastil will be able to go and uh, grab the Dire Bounty Rune at least, but Smell's going to make sure he does not get the Water Rune up top. He does manage to snatch that one away at the very least. Actually, Pastil just TPs to his tower, wants to try and duck around, but Matthew's also here. Guarantees the refill of Smell, so good movements there from the Bugner. FBZ and Smell leading in terms, of, in terms of CS, but the uh, but from Winter Bears, they're not having that big deficiency that they had the previous game. Yes! It's bad, but it could have been a lot worse. As top lane Kuroki, can they get the skill? He's gonna be able to get himself away. The damage applied to there from Winter Bears. We will see who survive. FBZ as well at the bot lane. Woo. He barely gets out. No, never mind. There's gonna be a wave of terror from afar. Secures the kill. Matthew, at the very least, gets a bit of retaliation. But regardless, that's a pretty nice little pick off there for Winter Bears for sure. I'm happy about that one. They are. Things are going pretty well for them in this bottom lane. It's the classic thing that we see. The double range, pretty good. It's a lot of minus armor with the bugs as well as the, the wave of terror. It's, you know, there's still a crack and shelter wood, but I don't think he has that even leveled up right now. Ball refill mid, so that death, very kind of beneficial overall for the team. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, That's exactly what Pasto needed, because again, falling behind in that CSP. <laughs> Whilst Avenge is gone. Makes it a lot more difficult for Reality to stick around and farm up right now. Oh, he's going to run back and in. Scoochie's still on cooldown for two seconds. He's... Oh, the spear was still on cooldown for a little bit too long. But Reality will be able to get himself away. Unless Matthew right, does drop a high ground ward, sees where the bugs go, and he's still going to chase this Radiant one. Awesome. Reality, he kind of knows. Oh, they dropped a scan. Very high Q uh, sort of little play there for Winter Bears. Well, well played by them staying alive. All right, the Ember Spray is level 5 and Sumail is level 6. This is one of the most dangerous times for the Embers. Like when you are very close to getting the, your Remnants, but you don't have them just yet. A lot of times teams will rotate to prevent that level 6 from coming out on time. But for Nigma, they're focusing more on reality here. I'm going to get a on Stoic, but that's about it. Oh no, Groki, he chops the trees. The spear doesn't connect onto anything. So now Stoic. He's trying to run himself away. Eventually, he's going to go down for sure. One more right click does get the finishing touch. Well, that looked a little bit awkward there from Nick with Galaxy. Maybe not quite on the same page. Yeah, it's fine. They still get the kill. It's still worth it. It's not like if there were rotations coming up from Winter Bears, that would have been actually dangerous for them. Oh, dear. That's a little bit of damage. They actually put a sentry right next to the tower to find him. Yeah, I wanted to try and dive for that one, but you know, Reality hides himself in the trees in a good spot. He's going to be fine. Free little sentry D-Ward. This is honestly fine for Winter Rears because their Weaver, like they're spending a lot of efforts to shut down the Weaver, and he is still getting decentish farm. But Nigma, they're starting to come out a little bit ahead. FBZ. Yeah, he's in danger right now. The minus armor really does add up. A stoic. He's just gonna keep on right clicking him down. He's got FBZ. Him. He's just dead. The power of the bugs plus the uh, the wave of terror, man. That is devastating. And this, the slow coming out from the Blood Grenade as well. Meanwhile, it's Wisdom Ruin is going to go one for one. So Winter Bears, I don't know what the win percentage is, but it's looking fairly even in this game too. So some very nice adjustments. Even the Ember Spirit's having... He's not as far behind. No, he, he's still behind. He's still behind by like 20 odd oh. CS, but it doesn't matter. Be on top of all the cookie jumps over Kuroki, but it doesn't even matter. They're still able to find the kill. Miracle, even the power shot, a little off the mark there to hit Catchall, but regardless, it's going to be enough to kill Jeezy. And Samael, <laughs> he just zips on to secure the kill. He's like, that is mine. Thank you very much. He's going up for, for the Orchid. The Missing the cookie may not, they still got the kill, but also wastes more time. So you're further away from your tower for a couple of seconds. Like these are all, all things, all these things do add up. And Matthew, please don't tell me he's going to get this. And he's going to find. May slay your first item for the Whispered again. He's, th he's thinking that the item build should work. It's better than the previous game. You know, it's solid, but at some point he's going to have to think about defensive items. Yep. Oh, Matthew. He's got a lot of people around him, although still Pastil's going to be able to grab up this haste rune. And that's just no way to survive from Matthew. Not expecting pretty much the entire gang of Winter Bears to show up for this pot of rune. Actually, thinking about diving underneath the tower oh. for this one. Kuroki in danger as Rally's just going to scoochie through. Still enough damage. 
Enigma's been able to survive the time lapse of reality just to get back onto the other side of the tower. And he's going to run himself back down to that bot lane. Enigma, not bad at holding hands. This is the second time we see them when, like, Sumail gets dove on. Miracle just runs from the top lane all the way there. It's like, all right, I've got to protect my friends here. In the end, they only get the poking up for their efforts, so it's not, not a big deal. Catchel, he's got the Ravage. Will they play it with, with him? Mm, just the stat fire that's coming up here for now. We'll see if maybe they also want to bring in Stoic. And with all that control, that should 100% be enough to get a kill onto somebody like Miracle. We'll see if they are going to uh, commit for that or not. The focus has to be on getting GZ to that level 6 for the Snapfire, because Ravage is good, but it's the Kisses that actually do the damage. So you've got to find some way to give him some sort of solo lane or a kill or anything. Wisdomers have already been picked up as Kuroki. They've got vision of him. He's next to the ward. Can they actually catch him? And they got like a smoke it? as well onto with Pastille and Stoic. But Kuroki. Oh, no, he's hung around a little bit too long. And that will definitely guarantee the kill. Tucks out the midnight pulse. Miracle actually maybe going to be the person they're going to go for instead. Cookie not quite landing. Nice to go And with the Decrepify, even Kuroki's going to be able to survive this. Not quite the way Winterfest wanted this five man gank to turn out right now. That's pretty much everybody is up here. The only person who isn't is just the Mars. He's chilling. Amazing juke by Kuroki. He ran a straight line and they couldn't catch him. You know, it was like, <laughs> it's like, how did he get away? It's like, yeah, I just ran. I didn't really do anything. Yeah. Still, reality goes back to farming. This was all. Free time for FBZ though, which is a bit of a problem because killing this Mars is looking like a tall order for them. Yeah, Pastil taking a lot of damage right there. And he will be forced to disengage. No bold charges, not much resources left at all. And go for, you know, the casual uh, TP remnant. Come back to base, that sort of thing, but yeah, he's gonna do it. Has no choice. Top lane, they're gonna go for the Titans. Durable. Yeah. Fire onto Catchel, has that Ravage, thinking about getting a chance to use it, but unfortunately, this is not going to make too much difference. Catchel will still die, and GZ going to end up dropping. Unfortunately, the power shot a little bit off the mark, but hey, things like guarantees a double for Samael. He's happy. They've got to get some sort of stacks going. I mean, I keep saying it, but GZ has to hit level 6 on the snap fire. It's, it's almost 11 minutes. Usually, your level 6s on supports should come between like 8 and 9. That's like if you're having a decent game. At 11, you're very far behind, and... All their aggression is waiting for Snapfire. Because without her, their damage is very lacking. Yeah, 100%. It's going to be very important for them to get that eventually. I mean, it's sticking in a way. Because bit by bit, Nico Galaxy resuming this sort of lead. 3,000 gold advantage right now. Samael just doing Samael things, casually poking on towards GZ. Not crazy enough to dive into the tower. Be back. Why not? It's fun for the team. And the thing is, I'm not seeing anyone going for the for any counter to uh, the Orchid. You know, we were saying Weaver, what was he once? Was he once on Snail Stomp mid lane? Trying to go for Bastille, but he's able to get off the slight and jump. He's going to be fine. And Kroki, he actually only just hit his six. Like a creep died whilst that move was happening. So he didn't even have the black hole to uh, get the catch. A very lucky there for Bastille, to be honest. Yeah. My, my worry is that they don't seem to be itemizing to counter the Orchid. They're just like, oh, Orchid comes out. We'll be fine. We'll dodge it. You know, Maelstrom on the Weaver and Power Treads. Maybe he'll get a Manta afterwards. Still the main slayer for the Ember Spirits. Good item. Not sure if it's going to be enough to keep you alive in this situation, though. Yeah, I agree. Might still be forced to skip something like Eul. So there, Kuroki has been grabbed. Thinking about dropping the uh, Black Hole. But actually, with the arrival of Catchall, there's just no chance. And there will be a freebie there going the way of uh, Winter Bears. So they're going to try to take down this mid tier one as well. Four heroes here to bring this one down. We'll see if the Galaxy are going to be all that interested in trying to defend it. They have the Ravage, they have the Kisses. This is a nice push by Winterbase, and this is what you want to do. You want to make sure you're playing on the enemy side, so you are using your abilities, you are being aggressive. You don't want to just wait for them to come at you. We still don't have the Orchid on the Stormship, but I think he's actually very close to it. Maybe he sells an item. This is just a couple hundred goals away from it, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Well, it ends up being a nice little free objective there for Winterbase. I think FBC. Oh, he nearly had. I think he bought something else out. I think he was. I thought he was just gonna get the, uh, the blink dagger, but. By the way, the win percentage actually favoring Winter Bears. Ah, oh, well, it was for a second. It was 52. But <laughs> that's, even though they were behind, not bad. Now they just need to actually use this uh, ki these kisses on someone. Well, you have to wait a little bit longer as GZ does end up losing his life. And once again, the power of having a uh, pocket behind you as a storm spirit just immediately gonna put it back up to full mana. And Potentially look for more action as they do get an arena grab down bottom reality. 
was not expecting that. That's a very nice pick up there from FDZ. They're gonna be able to finish taking down this tower. Meanwhile, Matthew with some mail. They've got to grab on towards the uh, the Ember Spirit. And yeah, Control, he's just gone. The burst damage, way too much to deal with. Mm, I've seen this script before. I've seen it before. It did not go for Winterbear's favor. And the Weaver gets burst down. This is the problem with the Weaver against something like a Mars. Like Mars gives you so much burst, does so much burst damage. He's not he doesn't have treads and he bought the elf band of elf and skin, so he wouldn't even have had, had the health for it. It's uh it's very scary. However, they're doing the right thing with Winter Bears. They're following Kachel. This is the guy you want to play with right now. Yeah, you try and roll it down this tier one tower. They got a little spot there on towards FBC. And Kachel's just thinking about like guys, let's just go for this kill. Nice spear to make the space. Whoa. All this is just raining from afar, but there's just no lockdown. FBC just casually walks away. Now that's a big sort of ultimate. The Winter Bears wanted to play around. Kind of wasted. Yep, we've been waiting for these kisses for about, you know, four minutes now. He gets it, immediately throws it out kind of willy-nilly. Doesn't really hit. I know he was hoping that the slow would land, but that was just not happening for them. Very unfortunate. Now you lose your... You have the Ravage, but you don't have the damage to work with it. Yeah, that basically puts them on hold for like, like another minute and a half. Yep. While that is happening, all three cores of Nick Galaxy continue to resume their farm. Miracle just happily sitting himself down bot lane. A full thousand gold ahead of reality so far. And he's going to have... Uh, going to have his Hurricane Pike coming up online at a pretty decent time. Power has finished on the Weaver. It's not as bad, again, it's not as bad as the previous game. You know, they are playing pretty carefully here on Winter Warriors, not taking too, like, crazy um, risks. Storm Spirit, he didn't have the amazing lane like he did the previous He still has a fast, or he's still the most farm here, but he's feeling like, I can't just do that as I did last time. Oh, they found it busy. Yeah, it's, it's a big kill if they can get it. We'll pop the stick, once to maybe try and get off the arena. There's Mass TP's coming first to Nick with Galaxy. Connects onto all four of them with the heals there from Matthew. He's pretty fine. The aggressive swap guaranteed to kill towards the puzzle. Okay. There's Samael. He's just zipping on through. They've got the silence on towards Bastille. The Ember Spirit is gone. Can they try and find anybody else? His miracles also turned up this one. Samael cliffing himself just to get the D ward. And they're trying to pursue off towards Stoic. Is there enough catch? Power Shot puts him to 10 HP. They just need to tickle him and Stoic will die. And ends up being a double kill there for Samael. But all they lose for it is this Matthew. Yeah, the rough the rough tickling at the end is what was able to get the Vengeful Spirit. As that was a lot. Like, they wanted to go kill FBZ. He saves the Ravage. Then they get caught by their four men. I, mean, I feel like that, that in situations like this, you should just use your ultimate. Even I know it's a long cooldown, but it's worth it to get these kills. Alright, Reality steals a DD ruin. He needs to be careful. There's no counter to the Orchid right now. Excuse me, sir. It's called Amplify Damage. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. you all called right. me out on that a few games ago, That's so I'm true. doing it back to you. <laughs> Base damage by 80%. All right, it's Amplify Damage. To be, It was never double damage, to be fair. It was always base damage amplification, you know? It, was, it wasn't exactly double damage. No, I suppose not. It would have been busted if it was, but, you know, the game's not that silly. The Dota is somewhat sensible. So now, now we have to call it what? It's, it was so much better as Apple. I, all right, still amplify damage in my heart. Yeah, it is ample damage. That is what it's called. Oh, sorry, double damage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you could used to be able to just say he's got DD, but now he's got AD. Yeah, like, I don't know. <laughs> it's something that's completely different. Like, he's got ADHD, people. This is what this guy has. But... <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, he's going to continue to shove this tier one tower. It's only Stoic here, so this is going to be a free objective. Going over towards Nick's Galaxy. Well, the rest of Winter Bears, maybe they're trying to hunt for someone past this tier two, but no one FPCs. Drop the arena. Casual just goes for the immediate TP out. Nothing to stop him. But at the same time, Smell, he's managed to find the Weaver. There's just no safe reality. And that is a big target to get taken down. GZ eventually is going to die. As he runs into Miracle. And again, two more kills there. Going to the Galaxy. The big one being the Weaver. Again, I mean, again, this last pick, Weaver, was so ballsy. You like, you know that Sumail's going to... Well, you don't know, but you are very strongly assumed that he's going to take the Storm Spirit. You pick a very squishy hero that doesn't do well against the Orchid. When... I don't know. I'm just very surprised to see Winter Bear is going for that risky pick. And Nigma, they're like, yeah, we'll just play safe. We'll take a Roshan now. Yeah, I think they're to pick that one for real though. TP's coming in from Winter Bears. They want to contest they it. They've kisses. got Ravage. They've got everything. They're going to go for this smoke right now. Meanwhile, Kuroki 
trying to put down some deep walls, I guess, but it's too little too late as the Aegis already picked up their first spell. They're going to this fight. It's a huge Ravage connects onto three. They just all disintegrate. Samael's barely able to survive. And he does at least keep that Aegis intact, but it doesn't matter. That's a big victory there for Winter Bears. Taking down Miracle of all people. And actually, Pastille's not done. He's going to continue to search for more knife spear, though. And it does make FPZ. Keeps his space, but regardless, big play there from Winter Bears. Yeah, good dodge. The uh, Kuroki, he kind of assumed that they might be coming like sort of from the from the side, but no, they just walked straight through the lane, fastest way possible. They didn't, they weren't able to contest the Aegis, but what they got was almost as good, cutting that net worth deficit by about uh, about three thousand here. And Kuroki, he's in a bad spot, by the way. He does not have blink. He doesn't have anything. He could get caught here. They spot him out with the ward as well. Hey, <laughs> he knows that he just. Takes the correct path, easily able just to walk himself away from Jeezy, no threat at all. Although, they're still trying to ping him out, perhaps. Samael gets a spot onto that uh, snap fight, he's 100% just going to go for it. Oh, Remnant, not quite close enough in the trees to get the vision. With the slide fist, they spot him, zip into the back lines, they get the silence on towards Stirk, trying to now focus on towards the Ember Spirit. Froki has the black hole, but considering there's the swap, it's absolutely pointless. Mm. They've all just backed off. So again, Samael, super close to dying. But he continues to keep this Aegis intact. FBZ shows up, they, they like, he's got Arena, let's be careful. As Ember Spirit, is he? Wow, he's going for Maelstrom. Dude, I gotta, like, the size of that man's intellect is always surprising to me, because he's just like, nope, I do not want to go defensive items in this game. No, no BKB, no Manta. This would be a nice kill. And Matthew does go down, which is something. Actually, two supports that maybe gonna think about going towards Samael. The jump in as well from Catchall. Black hole. Obviously, it looks like Samael's gonna commit. Black hole is there, connects on two as well as the arena, getting the grab on towards Jeezy. Gonna be able to take down two right now. Samael just gonna walk himself away. Pastil though is gonna continue to chase. Oh, guy get this kill on towards Kuroki. Samael kinda wants to die. I guess he wants some extra mana. But it's gonna be the slight. Zips on through, but actually runs straight to the waiting arms of Miracle right now. One more remnant to try and run away, but now he's out of resources. Reality is also here. Gonna check out what the bugs, but FPZ just jumps straight past it. Wow. Miracle, he's taking so much damage, he gets melted right now. And FPZ is the one who has to try and get himself out. Very big turnaround, although Sabale is getting topped up here from Matthew, so maybe he might try and go for some sort of jump again, but probably not. A couple of uh, kind of Unfortunate mistakes by Miracle being caught first in the top lane when he was leaving. I'm like, all right, you know, everyone got caught. But this one, in this situation as well, the Gleipnir comes out, catches him. They just bring him down. They also have the Dead in the Water ability for Catchel, which means that it's not as good as usually. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's just <laughs> completely destroyed that. All right, free beef there for Winter Boys. Smell does get a D ward though, but. You know, I think losing Kuroki when he doesn't have his black hole available doesn't really make too much difference for Nick McGalax, I think. It's like, eh, oh well, he's dead. That's true. In terms of what they can actually do in team fights, I agree, but you are giving, like, you had a 6,000 gold advantage. You're down to one. Oh, and Samael! <laughs> that was extremely close. He nearly died there. Also, Miracle just grabbed two wisdom runes. That's how long it's been since Nick McGalax had been back over to this side of the map. There's a missed up on the 14 minutes one. There's one on the radiant side as well if they want to go for it here. And they're up to back to 3,000 gold advantage thanks to that shard. Do they get FBZ? Possibly. No, he's just going to turn around here with the arena. With the Mormon's kisses coming through, they take him down with the Ravage. They secure Smell. the Gorgals. Matthew as well. Just turning into a good fight here from Winter Bears. Smell has to go for the retreat. And the radiant squad get a pretty easy victory. And they might even try and push the tower with this considering how it's a catapult wave. Quick, I, quick item roundup here. We saw Reality. He's got the Atos, which he's going for after this. He wants to go for the Hurricane Pike. Not interested in the Manta style on the group. I, Winter Bears, they go balls in. You know, they're like, we do not go for any defensive items. We are just going completely aggr aggressive and we hope for the best. Yeah, well, <laughs> it seems to be working out so far. I mean, they had a rough start for sure, but since then, they've been able to cut down the net worth lead for basically nothing. Top lane? Even the Wimper is 50 Yeah, up top. Ooh, barely is able to survive there. Reality manages to back on out. And Samael, he's going to continue the chase. Still has ages for 20 seconds. 
but Winds of Bears, they're just going to use the opportunity to run away. Not interested in overstaying the welcome, though. Down bottom, they found Miracle as well. He's going to try and stand his ground there with the focus fire, but the damage just coming in way too quick. He needs some help for the rest of his team. There's a TP coming in. Fantastic shackles! And now here is the Mars trying to keep him out. Miracle's TP barely completes. He will be able to evade death. Damn, that was close. Although, it's a male. Long zip in. He's managed to find this grab on towards Stoic. As she goes with the Vortex grab on towards Pastel instead, he can't quite make his mind up on who to kill. And as a result, he gets nothing. That was a bit of a mistake by Stoic, that swap. He wanted to do the extra damage, but the Shackle followed me, making him right next to the Ember Spirit, and that's why it lands on both of them. So it was like, nice intentions, but did not go out well for them at all. And by the way, he actually went for the Magic Missile Cast Strange at level 10 rather than the Nether Swap enemy damage. That would have killed him. That's why Miracle lived. He didn't have that talent. That's true. That is actually very true. You know, there's these small little things that can make all the difference in this game, and yeah, very, very impactful indeed. Dota's never one mistake that you make or one decision. It's like cumulative of, I hope that I pronounced that word correctly, is of like seven different decisions that you make every minute that it's like, all right, I made a lot of mad ones. Oh. Just like FPZ. FPZ. Yeah, getting dived under his tier two again. He's gonna be able to survive this time round though, as the male zips in to make sure he can silence up and cancel out the uh, the Bortmus kisses. Although Pastille? Okay, he was thinking about it, but he does decide just to back out instead. But even still, man, like, it, it's now Winter Bears who are putting the pressure on towards Nick the Galaxy. And all they've been able to do for the last few minutes is just try and dodge around it. Yes. Bit by bit, Winter Bears have taken more and more control of this map, taking away plenty of, uh, plenty of objectives. So, Nick the Galaxy is going to have to start feeling pretty uneasy soon. By the way, if Pastille he's going for the BKB. If he gets it, nothing pierces that except Black Hole. Like any, and even if the black hole comes out, he'll have like BKP, flame guard, some decent health. It's um, it's kind of a little scary here for Enigma Galaxy, and you can see win percentage 55 for Winter Bears. I feel I feel like that's fair. Advantage is on on their side at the moment. For sure, and they're going to keep um claiming more space, take down the bottom tier one. Maybe thinking about going for the tier two as well. Still huddling four people nearby. The only person who left was Pastille. But well, he does have a uh, remnant, I believe, so he can always rejoin at a moment's notice. Well, they have GZ is big. I think he's got Guardian Griefs coming up for him, so using the Orchid on the Snapfire is kind of pointless. Maybe just to stop him while he's kissing, but other than that, the Orchid's very nice for him. You can all, sorry, not that, the Greaves are very nice for him. Just to remove the silence, so you can save some with a cookie. Radiant's is under attack. See how uh, quickly it's going to be before he can get it. Miracle's going to take down the top tier one. And another 25 seconds before Roshan could potentially be up. I'm sure that is probably what Nick for Galaxy are going to have their eyes on because, you know, they, I think without it, if they let that slip into the hands of Winter Bears, they're going to be in a very awkward spot coming into these next few team fights. Yeah, for the game, but 50 50 bang on. Damn. Finally, finally, a good game. You know, after five stops, we have a good one. By the way, there's BKB, fresh BKBs on Miracle and Sumail. So Ravage, not the fact, not a scary factor that it used to be. Uh, at least you know, they are able to use it in time. That is true. Yeah, Rochan, it's going to be a minute. Got a bit of time. But well, here comes it with Galaxy. If you think about trying to take control of their own triangle area, but actually FPC just makes a decision to uh, use his blink to run away. And that's just going to be an opportunity there for Wits Bears to take down that bottom tier too. Which really are opening up so many parts of the map. And probably going to have to start seeing people head up towards that top Rochan area, as it could already be respawning. Obviously, both teams don't know that, and there's not really much vision. Uh, Stoic actually puts a circle around. He's like, guys, Roshan is coming up, and you can see everyone's going top right now. Kuroki does not have BKB, neither does FBZ. These are the two kind of biggest team fighters that you want to get rid of if you can. Sp particularly, you know, the Black of the Enigma. Oh, they in. They got the grab. The immediate Ravage turnaround. The male just gets annihilated, although they're still trying to get the kill onto reality. The swap Sweet. damage protection is just enough to keep the Weaver alive. Now all of a sudden, Nick with Galaxy, they're in a desperate position. It's going to be back on immediately cancelled though from GZ. And Miracle just goes for the decrepified TP out, but he can't even make it. Killed in his tracks. And Matthew will also for Winter Bears, man. They are smashing it here in this game number two. And Roshan is available. The, this is kind of scary. You cannot have Sumail jump in or Miracle. It has to be FBZ who's the first in the fight. And FBZ was not there. So they kind of went in thinking, all right, well, this is going to be fine. They have vision of the area, but 
jump on reality, there's a Vengeful Spirit right there with the shields keeping him alive. So really well played by Stoic in that situation, using the swap at the last second to give him the damage, but not damage, sorry, the shield. Yeah, it was it was absolutely fantastic. Obviously, I guess Samael just wasn't quite expecting the entire team of Winter Bears just being sat barely outside of their vision. And yeah, they got punished hard for that one. But like you are saying earlier, Samael has the BKB, but if he can't actually use it in time, then it, it is absolutely pointless. And as we saw there, very punishing. And uh, Reality's just picked up a Nullify now as well, so extra means of catching these supports. Alright, the, the, at least the FBZ in the next fight will probably have this BKB available. Uh, the recipe is still about 900 gold away, but he has to be the first guy in the fight. And he, they have vision, they know this is here. Is he going to start it? Doesn't have much mana to play with, barely enough for an Arena plus Spear. As a result, they're just going to play it safe. See every single person of Winter Bears are ready to take this fight, but they are still lacking uh, Ravage for 45 seconds. Might be enough for Nickman Galaxy to try and force this one. Yeah, it all depends. Do Will Winter Bear actually give them that opening? They're kind of huddled together, sort of, kind of hunting, but not really too committed. Just should go for the towers, which are sort of the safer options here. And they go through them pretty fast thanks to the Snapfire. Mm. Yeah, absolutely shred these building species. And it looks like they're going to continue to force the issue, pinging out this high ground at the bottom tier 3. Although, with these wards, do but, spot Matthew, but not quite enough to really to, uh, go for this very risky dive. He's going to play it safe and start hitting the buildings. I like how Stoic's like, at the very just like, just come a little closer, please! Oh, oh no, dump him from Catchel. They got him. Matthew on their door. He is just dead. Immediately gone. FNT attempts to spin their one towards reality. A little bit off the mark, so the Weaver's going to be fired in this tier 3. Gone in a second. It's going to be a full set of barracks as well. Miracle's just TP back in for this one. Everybody's ready to try and make a jump. There is no buy back here from Matthew. So it's a 45 in the best of things. And then they got that one towards Kuroki. He's just gone as well. No black hole either. Does have buy back at the very least, but the full set of barracks is already gone. By the way, FBC doesn't. he's only going to get the BKB now because he went for the shard. He always likes to get the shot if he can get it, because he believes in his ability to get two off. Well, Samael jumps in, BKP, not enough to get the kill on towards reality, but at least they able to take down Stoic. Almost kisses as well there from GZ, forces them back. But does Winter Bears even care? It doesn't look like they're going to continue to push, even a buyback on the Venge. They really want to try and take as much as they can. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if you really need to use the buyback, because they use, I love this when this happens. One guy buys back and the team's like, alright, let's just go back. And like, wait, no, this is... I used the buyback! So, uh, interesting move by Winter Bears, thinking that Gresham is going to keep going here. And to be fair, like with the arena up, with the black hole, with the BKBs available for Nigma Galaxy, except for Sumail, it may not be the best time to go high gun. We'll see what Winter Bears decides to go with, though. And he's going to shove it, why not? Oh, and FPC attempts to spear back, but again, he's off the mark! Now the potential turnaround does pop the BKB, they got the silence there on towards reality. Legend Vortex, but immediately Samel just backs all now. They have Ravage. With the time lapse, Reality's going to be A-OK. -okay. They catch all, yeah, he's just waiting for the opportunity to jump on in and just cause so much havoc. Although, Nickel Galaxy, they've gone for this smoke, but the Slide Fist actually cancels a lot of it. All this information is there for Winter Bears. They're trying to force them back, but even still, the power's going to go down. What are Nickel Galaxy waiting for? What can they actually do to try and turn this fight? They need a big black hole if Kuroki can get it, but it's not easy at all. Now yeah, once again, jumps in, but can't get the lockdown. Has to retreat immediately. No arena, you know, that's the problem. It's like, FBC is trying to jump and spear oh, somewhere, but it's not enough. He just can't land it. So many times in a row now, he's spent a couple of pixels off. And as a result, it's a two full set of barrack advantage here for Winter Bears. They smoke, smoke back. They, they're done. Oh, they're going to try and just end this game right here. And now it feels, if they can get a good jump, and everyone's quite clumped up right now for the Galaxy. Never mind, just be FPZ. Ravage will onto him. Clips on towards Goroki. That's no buyback here for the Mars. 50 seconds in the dirt. And I feel like Winter Bears, they could probably just run to that top set of barracks. There's no glyph to stop this at all. Kuroki, he's got, he can sell something and buy a BKB or he can just buy a, a Blink Dagger. But no, they're just going to go for a fight straight away. Okay, Smell. Maybe trying to force the swap. There it is. Although the immediate use there of the time lapse, Samel's the one who has to retreat. Die back. Excuse us, Raymond on through. So Stoic is gone for 70. That's not a bad little turn of events there for the Galaxy, but Kuroki has no chance of retreating. He will die. May very well be forced to use his own buyback, as uh, Pastille's also now got a Glepnir on top of everything else. Kuroki, is, is he going to buy back and sell an item? He can sell an item and get get himself the... the yeah, but no, he's not going for that. Alright. 
Didn't see greedy for that one. Catch all jumps in. Still getting stunned for the Malaphys, but Kroki's just well out of position. Does get chucked on from the Glepta control for Nullify. He's just dead. He can't use his ultimate at all. So Mayo as well. He's rooted in place into the back lines. There's going to be the Trepify save there from Matthew, but it makes no difference. He still dies. They managed to kill Busy's the Weaver, here. but it makes no difference. You see, he's going to need a Dream Orb. Well Let's get the immediate grab on towards Rousey. Can they bust him down? The immediate pipe back from Sameo. They take down the Weaver. It's a big kill streak. And GZ2 will fall. Catchall goes for the safe TP out. So at least Nick Galaxy, they hold on to their set of barracks, but it costs them big. And the reality, he's, he's taking a rest. He's, he needs a break. Holy moly. Dude, I mean, I was looking at Kuroki the whole time. He had enough money to buy a Blink Dagger. Then he's like, oh, I'm so close to the BKB. So he doesn't want to sell, he doesn't want to sell anything for that. He dies. He comes back. You can sell, like, your ogre, ogre sorry, axe, whatever. And you can buy the Blink. And he's like, no, nah, I'm not going to go for it. Walks and dies. Very unfortunate timing for Nick Galaxy. However, they keep the top racks like... Thanks to an amazing play by FBZ. Like that spear into the arena timing was perfect. Literally was. Without that, this 100% would have been game over already. But as a result, Nick Galaxy keep their feet in this game. It is only a 3% probability according to Gaben, <laughs> which uh, isn't much at all. It's going to be extremely hard to come back on this one. It feels like Nick Galaxy cannot afford to make any more mistakes. They've got to perform uh, flawlessly from now on. Yeah, if you can get storms, if you can get to mail his Aghanim scepter, suddenly you can you can do something with that. They do have a whole minute without the Weaver. They have 45 seconds without the Snapfire. So if Nigma, this could be a chance for them to sort of get out of the map and do something. Roshan's also down. I think the like dropped just a little a few seconds ago anyway. It's a, it's a tough situation for Enigma Galaxy, but it's not impossible. We've seen big black mm -hmm. holes turn the game around. I don't think this is one of those games, though. No. It, it's if somehow this game turns around from Kuroki landing a five-man ult, then it's going to be the both like the best damn outplay in a long time <laughs> for him to be able to get into a position because it is just so difficult, man. It really, really is hard. Mm. I mean, how far is he from this uh, BKB now? Still like eleven hundred gold, which is going to take him a fair amount of time considering how it is just a uh, support enigma. And even if you do get a good black hole, if you don't catch Vengeful Spirit, it's all useless. Like, Venge has to die, then you can BKB and black hole whoever you want. Like, if you can do that, mm -hmm. then it's fine. Tidal's got the Shiva's guard. Does, uh, what does Ember Spirit have? Can we look at that? Because usually we see the Ember Spirit. No, he's going for the Glyph here. He's going, and Shiva's guard is queued up as well for him with the BKB. I gotta say, Pastel, like, he went through the Shonen training arc, and he is crazy good in this game. Yeah. 100%. Like, he has shown that the redemption is there. <laughs> sure, game number one was absolutely abysmal, but he doesn't care about that. He was able to take the mental reset, and he's going to be fine. I also yeah, I like what, performing really well. I, was gonna say, I like what Stoic's going for with the Aghanim Scepter. You know, usually I feel like it's a little bit greedy to see some Avengers, like, rush. But in this particular game, you need Venge to have the double life so you can get that set swap. If not from your first life, then your Ghost can do it for you. So... Mm -hmm. Prioritizing his farm, not going high ground until he has it, is very clever by Winter Bears. Yeah, he's not going to be too far away from it at all. Only uh, about 200 gold. They also get a free shard into the hands of Jeezy as well. So that's a nice little bonus for the uh, snap. Also pretty close to having a uh, blink as well. So just been in to get into a better position for those kisses or an extra grab cookie, something like that. So it's going to make things a lot easier here for the side of Winter Bears. Mm. I think that's always been one of the biggest problems about Snapfire is that you want to be far away for the kisses, but you want to be close by for Scatter Blast and Fire Snap. So the Blink Dagger does help you with that situation, but it's uh, it's always been an issue with this hero. Where where do I stand? You know, close by for my normal spells or far away for my ultimate? Yeah, I think considering how they've got like the Ravage set up, I'd probably say the priority for the uh, the Mortless Kisses definitely should take the precedent in this game. That's how uh, I feel as well. Yes. Yeah, he has just got the Blink Dagger now coming out on the Courier. Do have another pause, this time from Nick Galaxy sides. And we'll right. see. You know, it looks like Winter Bears, they're already thinking about trying to go for high ground again, considering just how aggressively they're positioning themselves at this top lane. Still mm -hmm. at least 45 seconds, though, for the next row. Like, Kuroki needs to sell his, his smoke and magic wand and finish that BKB. You know, that's... Because it's not... These two things aren't... Well, maybe not the smoke. The smoke is pretty valuable. But at least send, sell the wand or find some way you can get a bounty rune. There's a bounty rune on the radiant. There's three bounty runes on the radiant side. Wow, they haven't been there for a while. 
<laughs> All the action has just been in Big McGalaxy's base. No one's had the opportunity to go down there. Can you imagine? Kuroki is like, Sumail, jump there, get me some gold. Like, how the times. Well, the gold's delivered right there in front of him. He should have enough after this. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Close sell enough. the smoke. Sell the wand. No, sell, sell the wand. Keep the smoke. Sell the wand. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> imagine if you could sell neutral items. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, man. How much would Philosopher's Stone be? Hey, he's going to have it, though. Philosopher's Stone working overtime for him. Sumail, two, go to the west, buddy. Go to the west. Pick up those three bounties. Yeah. Dyer. You know, I feel like if they actually had vision on all those bounty runes, mm. I would be surprised if Kroki actually does call for that play. Like, just do it. <laughs> just go for those bounties. We need it so much. But next Roshan, it's a two-minute spawn time. It's pretty damn long indeed. So not going to see that anytime soon. As uh, um, Sunel, sorry, is still trying to build in towards his axe. He's pretty close, only 300 gold away. So with that and the BKB here from Kroki, it could be a big old power spike for them, but unfortunately for they with Galaxy, they feel like they can't wait that long as Roshan could already be up. Castle? They can head on over here. Oh, this could be a nice grab if they can get a freebie on towards the side hunter or not. Oh, the immediate blink there away! Miracle's already used his ultimate as well. It's a big old mistake. They will get the immediate D ward at the very least, but in comes Winter Bears. They want to try and force this fight. FPC has to go for the big tagger back. Matthew there with the four stuff and Ogre Seal. He's going to be able to retreat. Oh, it's easy. The arena, but doesn't land to anybody. Like, what is this? Bears just back on out, duking around all the ultimates, and now, like, Nick would just flee back to their base as fast as possible. What is the symphony of fails? You know, every spell that Nick was going has is not working. Ah, oh, that's a good start. Oh, that is a perfect jackal that's come to that with the BKP. Swap. The swap is there immediately, so the black hole does absolutely nothing. They get the spear back onto the venting spirit at the very least, but he does now have the axe. So it doesn't even matter all too much. FPC still getting control. He's trying to run away, but good stuff there from Stoic yet again. Drags it back on through. But Miracle, he's got the shackles on towards the Weaver, but there's enough save and control to keep them alive. Now Miracle's the one who has to run away, but the barracks are falling. This might just be Megas coming through, but it's nice a catch. Force. He's got some AoE control or damage coming through the Midnight like Pulse. Magic will be doing a lot of work right now, but Sameo will still die. He's gone for 100 seconds. No buyback available for him, but it's a full team wipe. They're all dead, and that very well is just the game here for Winter Bears. I cannot believe he walked in through a like a just a black hole in front of two people, and just you can see Stoic is like really. We just instant swap gets it cancelled. Ning my galaxy kind of a mistake after mistake in that last situation. They jump on Kachel. That was unfortunate. That happens, but FBC throwing the arena.